Emotional marketing is all around us. From ads on the radio preaching for the best tiles on the market to the coffee shop you visited this morning, they're all appealing to one common thread, our emotions. Because emotions are so ingrained into our DNA, we can't help but use them for most every decision-making moment we're posed with. You might have all the spreadsheets and fully calculated strategies in the world, but it's a fact that people respond to their feelings first and their logic second. And today, that's what we're gonna talk about. Howdy guys, it's Liv here from Neighbourhood, where we help brands find, sell, and keep their people. As a marketer, appealing to your audience's emotions is a no-brainer. With the number of media channels, platforms, and devices consumers have access or interact with, brands nowadays need better and more effective ways of delivering their message. Standing out from the crowd and having memorable and fully absorbed messages is something emotional marketing can do for you. So what is emotional marketing and why does it work? Well, simply put, emotional marketing is marketing to a consumer's feelings to ultimately incite an emotional response. I mean, the clue's in the name, right? The point is to tell a story that connects with your audience in a personal way, where they feel they could react by feeling any of the one four core emotions, happy, sad, scared, or angry. Because it's in our nature to initially judge decisions decisions on emotions, not logic, this type of marketing is successful because your audience is presented with a reason to attach themselves to your brand. And with strong customer connections comes brand loyalty, as a survey found that 57% of consumers would be more loyal to a brand that's human. Also, studies have shown that when people become emotionally fired up, we have a high tendency to retain this event in our memories. So. Leaving your audience with an impactful, emotional message is a certified way to get them thinking about you for longer. So how does it work? If you've gone shopping and finally decided to purchase because you've justified to yourself that you deserve it, then you, my friend, have let the emotional part of your brain lead you to buying. Whether it's to build your shoe collection or to satisfy your craving for chocolate, almost everything you buy has some kind of emotional connection. Because a brand is nothing more than a mental representation to the consumer, having positive associations about the brand is absolutely crucial. This can come from previous encounters, current usage, and what they've heard from other people. So if your audience can't connect your brand with positive emotions, then you may have lost touch with the heart of your business, and perhaps you might need to start reconsidering your marketing campaigns. Targeting those four core emotions can give your brand an edge with building and strengthening relationships with your audience. Let's have a look at how you can use these four core emotions in your next marketing campaign. Number one, happiness. As an emotion we crave to experience, being happy ranks pretty high up there. From the hobbies you love to do during the weekends to the values that matter most to you, striving for happiness is undoubtedly something we constantly do. So as marketers, evoking joy in your customers attracts them back to your brand like a magnet. Sadness. Empathizing with customers is something we do when posed with messages that tug on the old heartstrings. When we feel compassionate about something, this gives us the motivation to act on the behalf of others. Think back to an ad you felt closely impacted by. I bet your bottom dollar you can remember it better than any of the billboards you've driven past this morning. Morning. You may have even acted upon its intended message. Number three, anger and disgust. Invoking disgust doesn't necessarily mean sharing a picture of a moldy sandwich you left under the office drawer to your audience. Instead, I mean giving them a wake up call about injustices that exist. Showing that your brand is passionate enough to provoke discomfort in its audience and challenge the norm signals to people that your brand owns its personal identity and stands for a reason. And number four, fear. When we feel scared, we get tense and our bodies go into survival mode. This is what prompts us to engage with whatever could keep us and others safe. For brands, being the knight in shining armor when your audience feels out of place is a great way to develop customer loyalty, according to a study from the University of British Columbia. To do this, make your audience aware that they're vulnerable or at risk but always ensure that you have the solution to prevent the harm from actually happening. You can check out some examples of these four emotions in action in the blog in the description. If you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe and leave a like. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you hit that bell so you can stay up to date on all of our latest videos delivered every week to your inbox. Now that we've explained the what's, why's, and the how's, let me introduce you to some of the ways you can put your emotional marketing into effect in your marketing campaigns. So what emotional marketing strategies can you use? Let's start with that. There are multiple ways you can tap into your audience's emotions in the competitive sport of attracting and engaging customers. We've got four strategies you can implement as a way of connecting with your audience. Number one, understand your audience. Because your customers are the heart and soul of your business, attracting and engaging the right audience is a vital step to any marketing campaign. 
This isn't something you can achieve without first knowing and understanding who the types of customers are that you want your brand to cater to. A tried and true method of knowing your target consumer and something we use is the creation of buyer personas. This concept essentially lets you visualize your target customer by creating a semi-fictional character that you and your marketing team can get behind. When creating your buyer personas, segmenting your audience into different demographics and psychographics can really help in narrowing down the ideal customer you're marketing to in your campaign. With these segmenting factors, you're basically putting yourself in your audience's shoes as you get to understand what their pain points are. By having a deep knowledge of what makes your audience tick, your brand is better equipped to deliver emotional marketing messages that speak to them. Next up, tell a compelling story. This one may have been a given because what good is any story if it doesn't make you feel emotional? Assuming you aren't a cold calculating robot, everyone loves a good story. And it's in fact a proven way to keep consumers engaged with your content. There's just something about reading or hearing the journeys of people overcoming trials that get our ears all perked up. With that being said, having your brand tell its story can be a really humanizing way to get your customers to relate to your message on a more personal level. No customer in their right mind is going to hand their money to a brand they perceive as only being a money-hungry organization. Ensuring that they have something they can empathize with, be inspired by, or learn from, doesn't only harbor your brand's relationship with that consumer, but also the potential for others, as readers will be sure to share content that moves them. Number three, create a community. Tapping into emotional marketing to generate a community around your brand is a great way to turn customers into loyal brand fans. Think of everyone's favorite, Apple. If you look into their product ads, you won't find them focusing on how much RAM the upcoming MacBook Pro has from the last. Instead, they focus on convincing you the reader or the watcher, that this device will change your life. Some might even say, appeal to your pain points. Because of this, the brand has created a community of consumers that fully commit to getting themselves decked out in Apple tech that will defend the brand from the Android and PC peeps at all costs. Because of our innate need of belongingness, as according to old Maslow, being part of a community gives us a sense of camaraderie and acceptance as we share common ground with people who we may identify to be similar to us. And number four, play with some color. If you weren't already aware that color and emotion have been scientifically proven to be linked, then I might have just opened your eyes. Color psychology is a concept that proves that specific colors evoke emotions to viewers. Cool colors like purple have been found to stimulate the brain into being creative, while warm colors like yellow and orange arouse appetite. With so many colors to use, each with a different emotion to stimulate, using the right color palette for your graphics and prints can indicate to your customers how they should feel about your brand. So some final thoughts. As a brand wanting to stand out to the eyes of your consumer, appealing to the heart makes your message stick because as people, answering our emotions is what we naturally turn to before anything else. With the power of emotional marketing, you're able to make profound relationships with your customers and get them to stick with you for longer. So if you found this video helpful, feel free to share it with someone you know that needs a hand with emotional marketing. You could also subscribe to our blog where you'll find a bunch more tools, tips, and templates to help you find, sell, and keep your people, just like Neighborhood does. So that's it from me, happy marketing.